Hey guys, all right, I am back this week for another tutorial. Today I wanna go over a topic, it's pretty broad, but we're gonna go over just a few key components about, uh, I guess, sig signal processing as far as monoing a signal or not monoing a signal. I had a friend ask me a question. He was like, hey, why are some, like, you know, why are some sounds monoed? And it's really multifaceted. There's a lot of components to it as to what reason why a certain sound would be monoed or not. Sometimes it's, it's just a personal taste preference in mixing, but there are specific reasons technically why you would want to mono certain signals though, and, um, and other reasons why you might want to spread stuff out on a, gener on a general basis because of technical issues that can occur. So the first thing we're going to talk about is lower sub frequency signals. You've probably heard this, that you should be monoing those and you definitely should be because there can be, there, you can have a lot of problems playing out stuff if you don't have the low end of the signal uh, monoed. If you send off your stuff to get mastered by a professional, they're probably going to do it for you. But if you don't and you're mastering and mixing your own stuff, then you need to remember to do this. The reason being is most club systems and also even like big live rigs that are you know stereo on the tops the subs are still i mean depending how they wire it up are probably going to be mono too which means there's no differentiation the a mono signal means there's no differentiation between the side sig side signal and the mid signal or the wow sorry i should like have taken notes i'm sorry there's no difference between the left and the right channel if there's a difference between the left and the right channel that's considered like a side the sides of a sound so when you mono a sound, the left and the right do not differentiate, uh, which means it's a mono signal. So when you have the signal monoed, you have no, it's not gonna be any phase cancellation when you sum it down and play the sound through a sub. So let me pull up a little graph that I found online here, which will make more sense. So what can happen is with a, with a, with a sub signal, if you don't have it monoed, there could be differences between the left and the right channel. And when it goes through the sub, it's gonna sum it down to a mono signal. And what can happen is, is if certain components of the sound are out of phase, like this is completely out of phase. Like there, it might, it won't be, generally if it does happen, it's not gonna be drastic where it's gonna completely cancel the sound out, but it can. So you can have phase cancellation, which on you know the low end of your track, if you lose that, that's the body of the song, like, and it's played out. It might just sound hollow, like nothing's there. So that's why you're gonna want to mono the lower spectrum of the signal. I generally take a, a kick or the or the, my bass, and I'll do something like this. Let me actually show you what how to go about doing that. Just using even in the box Ableton Live stuff. So you could open an EQ8. And there's a little cool mode thing here. You can switch to mid side and you can process the mids and the sides differently. So basically if you had a sub going, like just a bass line going through here, you're probably, and it depends how it's processed. If it has like a chorus or something on it, the bass does, it's gonna have sides all the way through through there. So you can go in here and actually just, I usually cut out to like 150 or 200 or whatever sounds good with the sound. Like I always try to go higher if I can. Um, but sometimes when you get too high, it kind of takes away the little, little life of the sound. It's really also dependent how high you go. But I'll cut out like the 200 hertz or 150 hertz of the low end side signal, which then monos this whole, all this under here basically will be monoed for that signal so that when it does run, because most, I think subwoofers, I don't know what the cutoffs are. They vary. I can't remember on live sound how where they cut them generally. It might even only be 80, 80 hertz. You might not even need to go that far. You should. I just go higher just in case. But if you mono the lower end of spectrum of your bass sound and your kicks and basically your track in general, it's gonna not have phase cancellation and when it's going through the subs. So I feel like I ranted a little too long about this and I hope that made sense at least for that topic. So that was when you would mono a signal and you could just go ahead if you wanted to, if you had a baseline and just use even your utility tool and then cu cut this down the width to zero and that, sorry, I bumped the microphone. That's gonna actually mono the whole signal completely. This actually gives you control on keeping the top end of the signal stereo, which with certain bass sounds like it sounds really good having kind of the spread on it. So it depends. This is all varies on each 
individual sound, the scenario, what you're trying to do, or how the song is being mixed. So that is like a technical reason as to why you would mono a sound. Now there's other reasons like stylistic choices or space in a mix that you need to have that you would either mo that you might mono a sound down because some sounds just get really spread out with effects and stuff and they get really wide and you might have a lot going on in the mix and when you have a lot going on in the mix it, it just starts getting muddy so what you could do is you could you know you might have some sounds spread out and then you might actually have a sound that you really like that's interesting but when it gets too spread out it kind of gets washed out and you could actually just take this ut utility tool you could pull the width down and mono it and you could even keep it centered or but once it's down to the width is zero it's like a very centered sound like there's no sides it doesn't really have any spread on it so then you could start panning it and almost pinpoint where you want it in the mix and have it float there so that's another reason why you might mono a sound is really just for mixing reasons like it it just works better in the mix that way and like I said in the beginning it's a really broad topic and it is very situational and to learn this stuff really comes from experience in practice you just it's not something you are just gonna read or you're not just gonna watch this video listen to me talk about it and then boom all of a sudden you're just gonna be an expert at this shit like it takes fucking time and but it's good to get the fundamental ideas of why you would do it which is what I'm trying to just go over to help you get a better understanding so I hope that helped as far as like why you would mono a signal there's one reason because of club systems and subs usually are monoed um, and then two stylistic reasons for mixing like you know for creating more space and keeping sounds in their own area now there's the other thing is you can also use things to spread out your sounds and there are tools out there by waves like a stereo spreader which I have somewhere. Let me see why I can't read this far away. Um. Uh, it's because I'm not even in, oh no, I'm in waves. S, okay, S, there's, there's this is like a waves. You. I also have a tool which I've showed in other videos that I found in like this video I watched online for mixing and mastering a long time ago. But this will actually like spread your signal out and you might, you'll wanna do that. I usually do this particularly with pads or like more of my ambient atmospheric stuff. And by using these tools, you push them out more to the sides. It gives them more spatial depth and it gets them out of the way of the center, which leaves room for things like the bass, the kick drum to pop through or anything else in that focal point that you want there. And again, this all comes from experience and experimentation to figure out what you like about the way you produce music. You might want your pads in the center and you might want to spread out other sounds. But this is one of the tools. Again, this is Waves. Probably a lot of people don't have this, so I can show you this other thing. And there's there's other ways to go about this, but it's uh, a stereo width tool that you can make with basically in Ableton Live. You're going to use an effects rack. You're going to create two chains. You're going to pan one left and pan one right. And you're going to put a simple delay and you're gonna link it on one of them you're gonna go down to time and I just have it set usually to 24.4 milliseconds basically anything up below that is it's gonna create spatial depth I'm gonna probably put a sound on here so you can hear it but when you get above 25 milliseconds with delay your ear actually starts to hear the audible delays anything below that it can't hear it it just sounds like the sound is getting wider so basically when you create this stereo width tool you put the dry wet to 100 and then you only put it on one and it actually makes the sound a lot wider it actually makes the sound wider than using the waves tool um and i really don't have issues with phase like with things being too spread out with it which is good like i was kind of concerned when i started using it i was like well maybe things are too spread out and it's going to start because you can have things too spread out that you start having problems with phasing later. It's it's a different topic. But let me put a sound on here just to show you. Let's just go with space stuff and see what... Oh, wait, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, I'm in, oh, I'm in audio effects racks. That's why I'm not in sounds. Let's go with... Let's do some, let's do some pads because that's what we were talking about. Bow coder pad. 
That's not very good for what we're trying to do. So we have our stereo with plugin on here. Let's hear it without. Now let's play it with it on. So you can hear how it's a lot more spread out. If you're on laptop speakers, you're not going to be able to hear the difference at all. I mean, you might, but it's going to be really fucking hard. But if you're listening on monitors, or if you have, especially if you have headphones on, you'll be able to hear the audible difference. But you would go ahead and use something like this. You can spread out your sounds, and you kind of want to get them out to the sides. And it kind of, you know, give your 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 mix and your song a, a, a bigger, larger mix. You have to use this appropriately and sparingly. Like, if you do it with everything, you're going to have the same problem with sound stacking up and mudding each other out. Like, you have to be very, you have to, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, you just need to do it w with actual thought behind it. Um, you know, why am I spreading out this specific sound? Well, I want it to get out and kind of sit in the back. It'll help kind of put it in the back, especially with pads and out of the way of things. So you can have other stuff floating through the center and kind of off to the sides a little bit. So when you use these tools and use kind of some certain things to mono and then you spread other things out, that is when you start being able to create a bigger depth of field within your music. You're also going to be able to work on the technical aspects that's going to give you a much more solid mix whether it is some to mono or not and you're not going to have phase cancellation I, I hope this topic helped it is a very depthful topic and it is very situational like i said before and i'm trying to just give an overview of some components that will really help you to kind of build from there and i and i hope this video does help with that um i'm sure there will be questions please leave a line let me know, you know, what you think or if, if you want me to cover it more in more depth, I guess I can show examples, which would probably help. Um, I just don't have anything that I could show right now. So that being said, uh, also subscribe to my Patreon. I've been uh, working on that and putting out sounds every week, or not every week, every other week uh, to the subscribers and it'll help support with these videos and also I'm going to be putting up art and visual visual art and stuff basically up on that as well so i hope this video helped keep watching leave comments get creative and let me know if this helps or if not and uh we'll make some more videos from there